Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mentor coach. And what I do is I help people that are tired of who they are and where they are in life. And this is Gloria, your life coach. I help those who are feeling stuck, struggling with difficulties such as self-doubt, inner judgment, lack of confidence, life transitions, and taking steps forward. And welcome to Life's A Shuffle podcast. Now, you may wonder why it's called Life's A Shuffle. And the reason why we came up with this title was that life is really shuffling. And it doesn't matter where you come from, your background, what age you are, you're shuffling multiple things in life. And the best thing to know in life is everybody faces your struggles and everybody faces what you're going through. But there's hope in learning something about that. So when our guests share their journey, the hope is you learn something in that journey so yourself can navigate the struggles you face, the low self-esteem, the self-confidence. And that's why we call podcast Life's a Shuffle. And throughout this podcast, we share our personal overcoming stories, as well as our guests who shares their personal journey in overcoming their personal struggles. Life's a Shuffle podcast is here to connect like-minded individuals. And thank you for listening to Life's a Shuffle podcast. Hi, this is Gloria, your life coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. Hi, this is Ronald Johnson, your life coach, mindful coach, and welcome to another episode of Life's a Shuffle. It's New Year's Day. This is our first episode of the year. And we have another guest, but a second time around, Dr. Pat is here to talk to us again about her upcoming business, everything she's feeling, gratitude, self-care. Dr. Pat, take it away again. Tell us how you feel for the first of the year. The mic well, is yours. I'm a- <laughs> Am I supposed to talk? Yes. It's yes. <laughs> <laughs> okay. <laughs> Are you guys editing this? <laughs> no, go ahead. Uh, no, it's it's just so show how you are. Okay. All right. I just wanted to make sure we're all doing it like we're on the same page here. So um, thank you very much for having me on the show again. I loved hanging out with you guys so much the first time. And we always have that pre-conversation kickoff for our, the show with you. And it's always so informative. And I love exchanging ideas with like-minded people and ch- exchanging ideas about how we can uh, live longer, better, and with a lot of zeal. So um, I'm very hopeful for 2021. I don't know anybody who thought 2020 was a good year. And by the way, just for an FYI, in Chinese medicine, when you study Chinese medicine, you study numerology a little bit. So the year um, that adds up to a four is usually, and for China, the, the number four is death. And so 2020 adds up to a four. So we know that, you know, we're really glad to have that, that, that year be gone. History, glad I made it through. Don't ever want to deal with it again. Been there, done that. Let's move forward. Keep on moving forward. So 2021 in Chinese adds up to a five and five is the number of freedom. So I am very hopeful for 2021 for everybody And I hope people bless themselves with a ton of common sense and work on their immune systems. And, you know, if they don't know how to do that, there's always, you know, they can ask their functional medicine or lifestyle medicine provider. They can call me. I will talk to them. Um, And I'll make sense of those complicated or challenging or confusing situations and give a better way so that, You can move faster, simpler, and have tangible results. So thank you so much for having me back on your show, especially on a very, very important day in 2021. Yes. You know, I heard you say something there. Um, And um, I I can't speak for everybody. I can only speak for myself, my own experiences. Um, 2021 was a year of evolution for me. And um, I so I, w- I can't say entirely it was a bad year. It was a lot of crap you have to navigate that for me, I just hated doing. But it gave me pause. So for since 2017, actually 2015, I've been personal trainer in the gym, 
working you know, 56 hours a week, work six days a week. You know, uh, at one point I was working every day of the week, working t- wasn't taking any day off because my fear was that if I take a day off, I'll lose clients or if I increase my rates, I'll lose clients. So 21, 2020 allowed March 17, 2020 me allowed to take a pause for 90 days. And what I mean by that is that in March 17, in California, you know, the mandate came in, everything shut down, stay at home and all this kind of craziness happened. But allow me to think one second. I had a dog and he had to be four months old and I was able to take him out on a walk and smell the freaking fresh air. You know, when you're personal training, uh, you know, for those out there that are doing it one on one, not app or not virtual, you're, you're working on your feet eight to 12 clients a day. And that's how many I've seen uh, at one point, even up to 14. But allow me to take a pause and really think to myself, what does Ron want for his future? My plan was to leave California anyways. And uh, I left since California two months ago and haven't looked back. I was asked the other day, do you miss California? The answer was hell no. I don't miss the sunshine. I don't miss the beaches. I grew up and born, I was born and raised in California. But back to my point, it allowed me to pause and say, what do I really want? Mm-hmm. And channel that energy and focus on that. Now, granted, some people out there did have some family members passed away from COVID and things happen. And I'm not trying to say that, oh, well, you know, for you, it's good, but you no, know, screw me. No, I'm trying to say, regardless of what happens, you got to take that pause to restructure what you really want. Because like I said earlier, before we got started, the hamster wheel, right? So the darn hamster doesn't know it's going around in a circle. It just keeps going and going and going and going. Maybe one day God just dies. But you got to look at your life. What life do you want to live for the future? And if this hamster wheel is keeping you, our call the treadmill, is just keeping you going, one day that heart was going to crash. And one day you look back like, man, I had an opportunity to make a change or opportunity to do this. Why didn't I do it? And it's too late for you. You know what? I believe that's with a lot of people. So many people was able to to take that chance or that opportunity of allowing themselves to pause. Unfortunately, there are some who was not able to see the brighter side of, you know, of um, being able to um, have that ch- that chance or that time to pause for themselves because they were caught up with um, with everything that everything else that's happening around them. You know, like they felt defeated. They felt like things are being taken away from them. And it was, you know, I, I heard both sides from from different people on that. So there's people that are, you know, that was angry all the time. And, and this pandemic caused so much anger in a, in a person. Yet you have those who have been able to take the time like you to figure out what do I really want for myself? What do I really want to do? I had to. Um, So when I was personal training, don't get me wrong. I like personal training and it helped me. It served me for a period of time. So we go through levels in life where things serve us for a period of time. And um, for me, that was a period of time that served me. So it allowed me to quit my full-time job, which I, I know Dr. Pat, you're talking about earlier about your friend. That mm-hmm. was me for 14 years. Not 14. I mean, those were some good years, but last five, six years before I quit in 2017, actually, February 17th, coming up next month, will be four years since I had a full time job. Actually, no, sorry, I take that back. Is my math is right? Four years since I had a full time job. But for four or five years before I quit, I was just always angry. I mean, upset, angry, frustrated. Um, I can't wait for the weekends to come because I'm going to drink because I got to get rid of that the anxiety, that frustration. I didn't know how, didn't have an outlet, didn't know about coaching, didn't know about therapists and how this was just killing me. I remember coming to work, walking up the stairs to my cubicle. I felt, um, I was throwing up in my mouth. I literally felt that way. It got to a point where actually I was calling out sick to work just because I needed a mental health day. I, was, I didn't even want to go on vacation, okay? I just didn't want to go to work. So... You know, what that being said is is that we're making ourselves sick with, with stress and being on a hamster wheel. I mean, what so, do you think about that, Dr. Pat? So let me ask you a question. If nothing is by chance, and that's true, and then I need to ask you a question. And my question to ask you is, what did you learn from that? Which one? Be more specific. Like, quit, have my full-time well, job? You know, it's just, you know, like, you know, you had a full-time job. 
How long did it take you before you realized that you hated it so much that it was de- is taking away from your life as opposed to adding to it? Shit. That's, that's based in reality. So what happens is that you already know what you know, but mm-hmm. you're afraid to make a choice. So you can have a choice to stay or a choice to quit. And that can be a relationship, friends, the divorce. Oh, I can't divorce my husband because I have kids. But you have a choice. So what happens is that what comes up is, okay, I got to pay my rent. I got to pay child support. I got to pay these bills. Uh, am I going to find another job? Um, you know, and what plays on this fact too is our owners were narcissists and so was my manager. So the, the idea they're selling us in the company, which is my fault for listening, is economy's bad, grass isn't green on the other side. That was an idea. So I believed into that idea. It wasn't until... The, until I met a guy one day, and this this is what I believe in universal law or the universe. This guy I met was one year older than my dad. He had the same exact birth date, uh, birth date as my dad, looked just like my dad, walked just like my dad. The only difference is he was Fiji and my dad was black. Okay. Mm-hmm. He said, he looked me in the eye. I said, hey, man, you know, I see you. We got the talking. You know, he's going to do personal training. I said, so you've been, you know, Dealing with, um, you know, having your own business for a lot of years, you came from a different country to America, you know, you made something of yourself. And he says, bro, let me tell you this, without taking risk, you never know success. Right then and there, I felt I got hit in the head with a hammer. I, I think I got done with that client. I had to go to my full-time job. So I would train in the morning for three hours. About nine o'clock, I'm making a beeline straight for the corporation, which was about 10 minutes away to go work. Um, so I went to locker room. The change to get ready for my full time career. Um, I had to wear a white shirt and tie, so almost like a business suit. And uh, I, I couldn't. I almost, I almost was paralyzed. I, I'm sitting on the bench. My locker room. My locker's open. I, I can't get my clothes out. At the time, I had a girlfriend, and it was already ready. It's already cute. I says, "Look, you know, send me my um, letter of res- resignation. Send me the letter of res- resignation." I walked maybe twenty yards to my car. I get inside. I mean, doors open. I couldn't get my foot in. And um, I drove to work. I just, I just couldn't go. I mean, my mind was just shattered mm-hmm. because then I knew what I was always knowing. And let me tell a little backstory about that. I hated Black Friday retail, especially at Fry's Electronics, my full-time career. It was chaotic. We had we didn't make any decisions. It was, okay, what did Best Buy do? And we'll try to compensate that. The bosses, the owners will always have these, I call them nightmares. They'll always say, Oh, let's do it this way. Every every day is changing. So I, so I call it like a na- nightmare because one day, Monday, they say, okay, we want to do this. Let's do it for hours later. I oh, know let's do this instead. Dude, it, it, it's always changing. And for them, they had no plan, no structure, and no philosophy of the company. It's just do. So I never want to do another Black Friday. And this was uh, October 2016. And outside that, what, for fries, we never paid our bills one time. So if we had a credit score rating, it'd probably be in the 400s. So what vendors got smart is that we know we need product to sell the customers. So when Black Friday would come, we purchase the product. They, in turn, then will put us on credit hold until they get a payment. Because they know by then, we call it, they put our feet to the fire to make a payment, right? And obviously, that was always messed up. The bill passed through was a million dollars, but they don't pay 500 k And they'll pay by check to give a couple extra days to earn interest. So I never want to do Black Friday. So my mom would say, okay, October 2017, I do not want to do another Black Friday. Black Friday would be in November. And I was like, oh, shit, you know, I don't think I can make it. Okay, hold on. What about June 2017? I think I think I can do that. <sighs> okay, I think I can do that. But the, the beat and the drum started getting louder in my head saying, you got to do something, Ron, because if you don't, you're going to miss the boat. That, that was what it said in my mind. If you don't do something, you're going to miss the boat. April, okay, I can, I can make it April. Okay, okay. Then I met that guy. His name is Stan Lau. And the second, third week of January, and without taking risks and never knew success, I quit then. Because that drum was getting louder and louder. Now I had a choice to ignore it or a choice to proceed forward, what I really, really want. So fast forward now to answer your question. I only know what I know now after more experience. But now I realize I have the power. I have a choice. See, people don't realize they have a power and they have a choice. They just let circumstances control them. They let this belief control them. They let the thoughts of people control me. Like my boss said when I quit, I don't know if I told you before, he said, um, let me tell you something, Ron. This is like a father talking to a son. What about your 401k plan? 
What about your benefits? You know, if this is my son, I would tell him don't do it. That son of a bitch was sitting there paying someone else 14% more than me base salary when I had seven years seniority. I'm looking at this guy, what a liar. So right then and there, when he said that to me before I quit, I, I have lost all respect for him, period. Because I told you exactly that. I said, look, you know, the reason why I'm quitting is because I started my own business. I'm not growing. I, I felt my mind, I was, I was committing mental suicide. And I, I'm not saying I'm going to hang myself or I'm going to take some pills. I'm committing suicide mentally because I'm not growing, I'm not learning. While cognitively, I thought I was faster at things, but because I wasn't being challenged and what I'm good at wasn't being challenged, I was just like a fish in the water, just swimming along the stream, not making any waves. So with that said, I only have more information now knowing I can make better decisions in my life going forward. So back then, I, I can only do the best thing I could do. So I, I know I said like five minutes of a journey, but I have to give you a picture because that's what happens. Um, we get caught up with the mindset of, what about this? So let's say I was thinking of all the things that would happen if I quit. I can thought of a hundred things. I can thought of five things. I never thought of one thing that I would benefit from quitting. So I never thought, oh, less stress. I start my own business. I challenge myself. I get out of my comfort zone. I never thought about that. So when you get ready to make a big decision, we always think about a hundred, a million different things that can go wrong instead of one thing or two things that can go right for our future. I hope to answer your question. I know it's kind of long. <laughs> well, you know, it certainly was, but you know, if nothing's by chance, then so let me sum up what I heard you say. You you hated your job, you hated your boss, it made you sick to go to work. Mm -hmm. And you it affected you mentally, physically, spiritually, socially, and emotionally. Mm -hmm. So one day the universe puts his name was Stan, right? Stan Lau, yes. Stan Lau. And in front of you. If nothing's by chance, then there was a message from the universe for you to say, you know, like, here, I'm, how many more times do I have to hit you in the head before you get it? <laughs> you know? and, so, and then so what you're supposed to learn is that when you have those opportunities in, confront you, you got to ask yourself, if I bite into this and I decide I'm going to own it, then... You know, what does that look like going forward? Because everything is a risk. Everything. Yes. There's not, there is not, if you're looking at mindset, mindset affects you from the moment you get up to the moment you go to sleep. Everything that happens has based upon your mindset. So, you know, I just like when I hear you, you know, have that conversation about that, you know, um, I, you know, a lot of people are stuck in the percentile of, like 54%, I think, is like they don't ever do anything because they, they look at it and they just think it's, it's overwhelming and it's very challenging for them. And plus, they might have had the message somewhere along the line is you can't do it anyway because you're stupid, you know? Mm -hmm. And it's just like, and or you're not smart enough or you're not this. So that self worthiness and that 54% is really difficult to break through. And then you have 27%. And I don't know if this is going to add up to 100 or not, but I'm just thinking the first number might have been wrong. But 27% are the people who keep on saying, well, what if? You know, I, just, I can remember going, when I went to go to Europe the first time, my mother said, well, you just got them inheriting some money from grandma. I just went like, well, I, I go, that's true, mom, but we're talking $2,700. We're talking like <laughs> millions of dollars, you know? And so, and I wanted to go to Europe and I was, you know, I was determined I was going to do that. And so one thing I'm very persistent when I, when I decide something, I don't give up. I never give up. I get up, I get dressed, I go out, I don't give up. And I just find a different way um, and find an easier, better way. Like I did when I was telling you my why earlier. So there's 27% of the people who keep on saying, what if, you know what, what if mean translates, it means mediocrity. And then you have the 17% that it, like they're working at it, you know, they're kind of like, you know, they have successes, they go forward, backward, forward, backward, forward, backward, you know, until they have a breakthrough. The 3%, they don't have to think about it too much. They might have to go like, well, you know, let's see, like, what's that going to cost me? If, if I, you know, don't succeed at this, then what happens? You just start all over again. It's like, there's no, nothing wrong with starting all over again, you know, and it doesn't make you a failure. It makes whatever you did, you might have to tweak it. And that's why they do market research. And that's why when people are writing courses, they give, they want to do the market research first because they want to give you what you want, you know, or else why would you buy it? 
And then you have the 1% that they're the elite. They just, they like, you know, it's they are, it's like magic for them. You know, they go, oh, we're going to do this. I'm going to start a company. And this is what it's called. And this is what we're going to do. And they have that. So if you're looking at being in your vibe or your vortex or an Einstein's time, then when you're in, if you can get in that mindset of, being in your vibe, in your vortex, in Einstein's time, then it's easier to transcend up that ladder from the 54 or whatever that was to 27 to 17 to three to the 1%, you know, but you've mm-hmm. got to believe that it's possible. You know, if you have, you know, and that's, that's the thing. So when you say, you know, before, and that story about this guy, cause you went through, um, you know, you're, it's, I want to use the word like almost reactive, you know, um, and in telling the story, I felt like I, you were still there almost, you know, and it's just like, you know, and so in the idea of keep moving forward is like, so this happened, what did I learn from it? And then move forward. Because then you can leave it behind you. So there's not an emotional tag that settles someplace on your weakest link in your body. Mm. That's, you you that's said it. something that was uh, totally, I, I guess, uh, not secretive, but actual reality. We ho- hold on to some pain, right? So mm. the pain I was holding on, I could no, actually, you're hearing my voice, hold on is the pain of, damn it, you know what, you guys didn't believe me, or damn it, you, you I, I should have done this sooner, you know, those are the pain we hold on to. And it's a reality. That's why I'm going through my own coaching program to hire a coach and professional. So the, all those excess links that are broken, because that's a link that's long, long ago, but that link is still twined into other links that are prohibiting me from really just taking that 1% leaps and bounds in my life. And so you hit the nail around the head when you said, well, it seems like you're still holding this emotionally. Yeah, it is. I, I, can, I can see it. I can sense it in my voice. And obviously, I'm going to go through my my way of relinquishing that OBS because it really is just OBS. Well, it has can I, no space on my life right now. Go ahead. Can I give you and Gloria and all your listeners a little um, little thing to do so they can get past that? Yeah, sure. Yeah. Like, this is one of my health hacks. And uh, what I do with patients, you know, and clients, um, especially clients, because I don't really have a lot of patients anymore. I have a lot. Of, my business is virtual. Um, but we even on the telephone, like, well, I'll talk to them and then I can hear hesitancy in their voice. And so, um, I'll ask them, you know, it's just like, so, um, let's not talk about diet today. Let's talk about you. Let's talk about where, where we're getting the mindset to move forward. So what I ask them first is if I remind them of their mother or their father <laughs> and, or their spouse, if the issue is with the spouse, I'll say, like, do I remind you of your husband or do I remind you of your wife? Um, and then the answer is usually, yeah, actually you do right now. <laughs> you know? so then I'll ask them, I go, so what is the emotion? What is it? to target it. Like, what are you angry about? What, what, what are you resentful for? What are you fearful of? What is that emotion? And then I want you to close your eyes and take a deep breath in. I said, and then tell me, I go, the first time you've ever felt like that. Because it isn't anger. The anger goes back to your five years old or whatever it is, you know, and it's just like, it's just like if you can identify, you know, going like, oh, you know, like I'm angry. Why am I angry? I'm angry because, you know, when stuff like that happens, I feel abandoned. I don't feel supported. Oh, when was the first time you ever felt like that? Oh, I had one time, you know, that, you know, I was, I felt abandoned when I was like 10 years old, you know, and then I had time that I was abandoned. I'll tell you a true story, you know, um, in a technique that I use called NAT called neuroemotional technique. Um, it, it can take you back through that time span and to like pop it in to make this relevant for people when the, uh, uh, Scott Walker, he's a doctor in San Diego. Um, when I saw him in Philadelphia for this conference, he goes, anybody want to volunteer? I'm always the person with my hand up. I'll go. Because that's how I learned best and is being that kind of good guinea pig. And so at any rate, he was doing this muscle testing on me. And he said to me, so what happened when you were 10 years old? You know, and I said to him, uh, when I was 10, I said, eight to 10, maybe we're eight. I said, my father left my mother. 
he left. He walked up, walked out, took his suitcases with him, split. And, you know, it was very traumatic. And so, you know, no one ever talked about it. No one ever said this is what happened and the such. And then, but he said, no, there was a time before that you were abandoned. And it was when you were two years old, you know, and he did through this muscle test and he came up with the number two. So on the break, I went and called my mother up and I said to her, what happened to me when I was two years old that you would have abandoned me? She goes, oh, when you were two years old, you had pneumonia and we took you to the hospital and they kept you there for two weeks and they wouldn't let us see you. So that emotion, no tag, got attached to my lungs and so and to my liver because the liver is the, 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 that organ in Chinese medicine is for anger and liver and for the lungs is grief, sadness. And so when he worked on me and we talked this through and I talk it through with people as opposed because I can't physically obviously work on them and that I have people who have that aha moment. And whatever it is that's keeping them stuck in their life, whether it's physical, mental, emotional, spiritual, or social, you know, they start to break the crust so that they can step into their new self. And so that day that that happened with this, this, um, this doctor, you know, I had the worst migraine headache I've ever had in my life. I couldn't pick my head up, you know, but I'll tell you something that's really interesting is that every Sunday because that's when I'd see my father when I was growing up every Sunday that I'd see my father and he dropped us off. I always had this feeling that's really kind of like in my gut feeling this was never felt good. And I always felt sad. And, you know, and if I wanted to see my father, I had to get the five 30 in the morning to go to church <laughs> on Sundays. I am, and I didn't want to do that in it at all. And so, um, but I'll tell you, after doing that work with this gentleman and learning that work, because it was so important for me to do that, I never had that feeling ever again. And when it kind of came back a couple of times, like when I broke up with somebody, a, a boyfriend, when I got divorced, it's just like, I just said like, oh, I know what that is. I can move through that. So you have certainty and you have this, you know, when you understand where things come from, you can put them in the box of where there's a safe place to go. That's where it lives. And you don't have to experience it ever again. Hmm. So I'm just going to be of you to do a similar process like that after we get off the air <laughs> and, and, and have that conversation with yourself, you know, and decide like, you know, and what you do is you keep on, if you have an event that happened is you keep on repeating that event and running it like a movie. And at the end of the movie, you ask yourself, am I reactive to that? Or is it now a memory? As soon as you said it's a memory to yourself, run it two more times after that you know, in your head, does it still feel like that? And then you, when you tell a story, you can tell it with a lot of them and bigger and that, but you don't have the emotional attachment to it anymore. You, and, you hit the, you, you said something that now makes sense now. Um, so two things, it's about my history real quick. First as I was, unless as a kid, second is um, my parents, both, you know, my dad remarried, and my mom went on her little tantrum of dating, trying to find love. And I now see the reason why I react to these kind of uh, emotional things like my boss, our relationships, is because I never felt supported. So when I got molested, I didn't feel supported. While my mom chose men over me, I didn't feel supported. While my dad allowed my stepmom to abuse me, you know, physically call me fat or whatever, I didn't feel supported. So when that totally now makes freaking sense, because now I've been carrying around this baggage, which is like a, a anchor because I never felt supported. And well, now you just are. Gave me a, moment, a moment of clarity. <laughs> well, now you are. And it's, and what's important about, about that, you know, and I'm sure Gloria has some like stories too, because we all have them. Mm -hmm. So if that's your ceiling, if that's what every time you hit that is holding you back from being exceptional, being on target, on your game, clear, clarity of thought, you know, I can go to sleep at night. I have no issues in my life, you know, then if that's what's holding you back and hitting your ceiling, sit there, sit with it, run it, that memory and go like, okay, did I ever have a time before that? 
And then you'll, you'll know the answer. It's just like, you just have to listen to yourself and just like, Oh, did I ever have time before that? Is it, was it a person place time in our thing that happened that keeps on triggering it off? And like, Oh, it's a person who's just like, or it's a situation that's just like, so when you get to those situations, you can say, you know, um, do you know, in, in Italy, like when there's, someone's telling you, like, you know, forget about it up yours kind of thing, you know, it's like you can push your hands and push that energy right back at that person and go freeze. And then that their energy can never, ever touch you again. You never, ever, ever give up your good um, peace of mind for anybody. Never let anybody disturb your peace of mind. If you do call me up. I'll go beat him up for you. (laughs) 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 You know, because I, I just, you know, sometimes I, you know, I love to advocate for people and I love to see people really excel. And that gives me a lot of pleasure. I like to see people have, you know, if you want to be healthy, here's your choices. You can do this, this, or this, which one do you want to do? You know, and they're going, well, I still want to eat sugar, but then you're not my client. (laughs) Go eat sugar with somebody else, but don't come to me with a stage four cancer telling me like, I should have listened to you, you know, and don't have that regret. I mean, it's just, it's like we, everybody is responsible and accountable for their own givings and misgivings, you know, and you can't put those responsibilities onto somebody else, you know, when you're looking at accountability. And so, but it, I, it behooves you and your listeners to just to go through that process you know, ask yourself, what is it? And if it's just like, it's a word that's vague, like someone says to me, I'm healthy. Well, what does that mean? <laughs> it, you know, you have to get it down to where you're funneling it down to like a couple words. Like, so I feel guilty. What did you feel guilty? Because I stole things when I was a kid. And now I, as an adult, every time somebody steals something from me, I know exactly what that felt like. Well, how old were you when that happened? You know, time, place, event. You know, and then go through that process of like, if you go like, oh, I remember Uncle George and I were in a store and he showed me how to shoplift, <laughs> you know, I mean, just making this up and, you know, but what, whatever the story is and then run it, you know, in your head and keep on doing it. And with your eyes closed, you start it from the very beginning, hit start you know, and play and run it to the end. And then you just ask you have to yourself, just ask yourself the question, is this now a memory or is it, am I still reactive? And if you're still reactive, there's probably something a little earlier than that. If you keep on coming up with like, I'm still reactive, I'm still pissed off. I'm still working th- through this. So you have to say like, okay, so there had to be a previous event. What person, place, time or event happened earlier? And what age was that? You know, it might be four, it might be, you know, just like go with your instinctual flow for that, you know, and then you can have some really good, great breakthroughs that you never even imagined in your life. And it's kind of like a DYI self, you know, self analysis kind of thing, I guess. But when you don't get rid of those emotions, here's the big thing. It's just like the, when you don't handle that when you don't get the handle on getting past what if, if you don't get the handle on it, then what happens is whatever that energy is, it settles deep within your body. Mm-hmm. You know, and so you kind of go like if, when people have certain, you know, sometimes illnesses, you know, I kind of think I ask them, you know, what I'm doing my interviews with them. Um, I ask them a, a lot of different questions. And sometimes they they go, we keep on going down that rabbit hole <laughs> until we hit what we need to get. And just like, you know, are you willing to do what it takes to be happy? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to be healthy? Are you willing to do whatever it takes to change your habits so that you can have the best kick-ass life possible? Mm-hmm. You know, so that, and if you are, you're in the right place. Yeah. So I, I was listening to you um, earlier about, you know, what you, you're giving tips as well. So yeah, something came up to me and we all have stories right but now um when you're seeing is are you willing to so it always it always comes from within are we ready to move on from that are we ready to to let go because otherwise it's just going to keep coming up and we'll keep reacting to it i mean you know i had that recently happened to me um actually right 
by I think yeah around Christmas time and I received a, a Christmas card unexpectedly and I sort of reacted to it but I gave myself you know about a week <laughs> until until um last night to really you know think about it how do I want to react to this how do I want to respond to this and you did mention um you mentioned to me that you know, January 1st is a day of reflection mm -hmm. for you, right? And and how to move forward with, with confidence. And I was thinking about that yesterday too, or last night too, is, okay, January 1st is coming up. What, what do we have to do? I mean, do we have to wait till the end of the year or till January 1st to really think and reflect move forward from whatever is holding us back or from from any situation that we're in and even you know with with the 2020 that everyone's been talking about you know this on the 31st everyone's been talking about I can't wait till the year is over this has been shitty and yeah I get that but did you have to wait till you know the end of the year to move forward from it well, it's just a formal date, you know, that you move from one to the other. I mean, there's no difference in the time continuum. If you look at what Einstein's definition of time and time continuum is, there's no difference. It either goes faster for some people or slower, but it doesn't, there's no thing like that. But the thing that you said that I thought was interesting and something like when you're trying to like work through something faster, so you're not holding on to it, you know, you got to mm -hmm. ask yourself, like, you know, you got the Christmas card. And it upset you. I'm going to presume it upset you, right? Or Somewhat. It... Mm -hmm. Okay. Go well, ahead. So, was, so this... um, yeah, I, I'm not sure. Now that I'm thinking about it. It's somewhat upset. And then a little bit of, I don't know how to, I, I just didn't know how to feel. I'm, I'm trying to, and the funny thing is I'm trying to figure out how do I feel about this? Okay. So um, let me give you, let, let's, do you want to work on something? Do you want to have a sure. breakthrough? Well, let's see if we can create a breakthrough for you. Mm -hmm. Okay, so you get a Christmas card that you didn't expect to get, and it made you upset on some level. And so it made you feel uncertain. Mm -hmm. And it made you feel like, you know, when you feel uncertain, you're confused and confused buyer, confused buyers don't buy. So it kept out, it suddenly put mud in your shoes and cement so you couldn't move forward. Right. So you got to ask, so you got to ask yourself, who does that benefit? Mm. When you, when you get, cause there's a previous time in your life that you've ever had that happen to you, right? So something happens to you, it makes you feel uncertain and you it makes you feel like you can't go forward. Right. So, right. So if, so if you had to put a feeling to how that felt, not like how the cards makes you felt, because that doesn't matter. What matters is like, the it's it's the big idea around the card and feeling upset which got you stuck and not being able to move forward so if you identify you know like hmm did i ever have that same kind of feeling before if so how old were you and then you ask yourself is there a time before that if so when was that and you keep on going back to the very first time, because if you only put a Band-Aid on this Christmas and on that card, you're going to keep on having that problem come back again and again, as you rightfully noted. So I'm going to ask you, in the way that you felt, and not how the card made you feel, but how you felt about the situation, when was the first time in your life that you had a similar feeling? Well... So this goes back years and years and years. And I think it's, mm -hmm. it's, um, I'm, I'm attached to an expectation on, in this case. Um, what it is, is to give a story on this is that I've been, um, out of touch and no contact with my real father who mm -hmm. I've had a, you know, it, it wasn't, I, I've never really. I wouldn't say never, but I was, I didn't really have a good relationship with him. And it's been, you know, like over 20 years now. So I've come to a realization um, this last couple of years that, I, you know, I felt like it was time to patch things up and that I need to really reach out to him. Now it's like, I felt like, okay, he's nowhere to be found. I can't find him. But I think it also goes back to years of every time we try to patch things out or up, 
it just doesn't work out to where like, yeah, he really just still doesn't accept me as his daughter or he really doesn't want a relationship with me. And it's always like that. So I, every year I feel like I go through the situation. So then I was able to reach out to um, his cousin who lives here in San Francisco. And I know my dad is in the Philippines, somewhere in the Philippines. I don't know where. I was able to reach out to his cousin and I um, told him, you know, gave him just uh, just every I just told him how I felt. And he said, you know, I'll, I'll be the bridge. Right. Goes to the Philippines. And I, I had hopes that this is it. It's going to happen. I'm going to talk to him. You know, we'll just kind of move on. Right. And just I felt like just starting all over with him. And let's just move on from the past. Well, I didn't get anything from his cousin. He went to the Philippines. He said, oh, here's your dad. He is alive and kicking. He's doing well. But that's what I got last year. I said, okay, I, I get it. Maybe then the first thing I thought was rejection. I felt rejection like, okay, my dad doesn't want a relationship with me again. He he doesn't want to to talk to me. Maybe he doesn't want to patch things up with me. Then, Gloria, you know, yes? I want to tell you something. Your father doesn't want to have a relationship with himself. <laughs> He can't, you cannot have a relationship with somebody else when you don't want to have a relationship with yourself. It's not you. Oh, that's pretty deep. <laughs> it's not you. You know, it's just like when you're doing all the extending, you're try it's like when you're trying very hard to make something work for somebody who isn't speaking the same language, mm -hmm. you know, they aren't going to hear you. They're going to go like, I don't, you know, like, I don't understand. I don't get it. It's like when someone's very pictorial and they're talking in the terms of like, you know, I ask them, what kind of street do you live on? And they're going, oh, the trees are beautiful and they're green. You can smell the grass when it gets cut. It's really beautiful. So someone who's visual and someone who's feeling, you know, but they go, like, I just can't stand the sound of the lawnmower. It makes, it's like nails on a chalkboard. And so when you're talking to somebody who is not feeling because you feel and you're using the words that somebody uses for feeling, like you can talk to Ron about that. You could talk to me about that. You could talk to your girlfriends about that. People who relate to feelings first, but you're not going to talk when you talk to somebody who is not on that same page. It's like talking to a wall. Because they, what they hear is, bloop, 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 bloop. Mm -hmm. and so you know, there's nothing wrong with you, you know what, you know, and there's nothing wrong with your relationship with yourself. But when stuff like that happens, you know, you have like you look at that when it happens, and you decide it's your fault. It's not your fault. Think of all the hard, wonderful work that you've done on yourself. You know, it's just like, and, and you're doing like, I want to be better. You know, Ron wants to be better. I want to be better. We all want to be better, mm -hmm. you know, but if you can see your genius, you know, there's like, you are connected to your father by blood. You know, you might not be connected by him. He's not your family. Yeah. I like so it. Yeah. You know, I'm not trying to make, you know, make him into a bad guy. It's just the way that he is. So if you understand, you know, like the th the feeling, thinking, you know, or like, you know, if you want to like have a conversation with him, you've got to have the conversation with, in the language that he understands because he doesn't know how to talk to you. So, and then even if you do talk to him, you might not have a, a connection either. There's just some people his job was to make sure you got on the planet earth. And so that you're here right now at this moment, you know, cause nothing is by chance and going into 2021 with confidence, you know, both of you guys are genius. You have such a great big heart, you know, and it's just like, who doesn't love you, you know? And it's just like, you got to take a look at the people who support you and the people who say like, Hey, you know what, Ron, I'm going to call you on that anger thing. Hey, Gloria, I'm calling you on this because I want you, I see 
you're genius and I want to see it blessed and I want to see you blossom. Both of you. Thank you. And, and that, you know, uh, thank you. It, it really did put some sense to it too. Um, in, the Christmas card, just to be clear on that is from his cousin. And, mm-hmm. <laughs> you know, the first thing was I was excited. I said, Oh my God, he has some news for me, but he, there was a note there and it had nothing to do with my dad at all. Obviously it was, you know, just his journey and his travel in the Philippines and coming back, I'm thinking, damn, here we go again. Right. And so I gave myself a hard time this past week about that before I responded back to him. And not only did he, you know, send a card, he reached out to me through text and I said, okay, I need to really respond back. But the attachment on that was the expectations of there's going to be good news. We opened it, no good news about it. No, no news about my dad at all. And then, of course, I blamed myself somewhat this week about like, had I been a better person to him when I was younger? Had I been maybe a better daughter of, you know, just accepting the situation, um, our situation, we wouldn't be in this position right now. And then maybe we would still be talking and we would have that kind of relationship, even if we're thousands and thousands of miles away. So that was- so cool things that came so, up to me this week. No, I understand. So Gloria, is there anything you can do about the past? You know, there's nothing I can yes do. Yes or no. That. Is there, is there no. anything you can do about the past? Okay, no. great. So, you know, all you need to do, and this is what, you know, like what I hear you say, and I could be totally wrong. So I'm just going to preface it. You know, what I hear you say is all you need to do is just say, I'm sorry for any miscommunication to you, dad, growing up, because I just want to let you know, I love you in the story. Love Gloria. Yeah. You know, because you've got to get, it's just like it, that, you know, that's a monkey on your back, um, you know, and it doesn't belong there. Monkeys belong in trees. <laughs> eating bananas. That's where monkeys go, you know, and, you know, and I don't like bananas and I, you know, and I like monkeys. They're very cute. Um, but I just think, you know, for you to get the, you know, to sit your soul free. So you don't have that sub- stored someplace in your body somewhere that's going to show up as some type of chronic illness or disease you know, or make it a weak link because that's where your stress goes when you feel rejected because we're all going to have rejection. You know, it's mm-hmm. just like, you know, so what? You know, you don't like me? Great. Guess what? There's a lot of other people who like me, love me, and think I walk on water. Thanks for sharing that with me. <laughs> you yeah. know, yeah. And, and, you move, and, and, and you move on, you know, it's just like every breath you take and every food that you eat and every thought that you think and Everything that happens to you is either projecting you in a positive way forward, keeping you stuck in the same place or holding you back. And so you choose how you're going to move forward. And just like if it is like sometimes you just have to, you know, like when when you like we all have like families, you know, um, a woman did a healing on me up in New Hampshire like years ago when I was with my husband. And so it's like really long time ago. And was, he found this woman who was a healer. I thought it was amazing walking into her very old house that there was no dust anywhere. I said, got it. I said, you clean this place all the time. It was a huge house. And she goes, no, I never clean. And do you have a cleaning lady? No, I never clean. So at any rate, she was doing this kind of Reiki thing, you know, hands-on healing type things with me. Mm-hmm. And at one point in time, she put this, um, turquoise lotus on my neck and chest it felt like it was burning and it felt like it was so heavy and then she said open your eyes Patricia and I said and I looked at her she said a mentally retarded person cannot give birth to a high priestess and oh, say it so, one more time hold on hold on say it one more time she what this woman said to me was a mentally retarded person cannot give birth to a high priestess. And I just started being a doctor, you know, and working on people and I'm looking at her. And the thing was, is that I told somebody three days before that, I thought my mother was mentally retarded. Wow. And it just stopped me dead in my tracks. And she took the lotus thing off but i could still feel it like for three three or four days afterwards until i kind of forgot about the experience and from that moment on how i chose to speak with my mother 
was totally different. You know, it's just like, and I will tell you, we all have that parent that we think, you know, did us wrong growing up and they owe us, but they don't owe you anything. Their job's over as soon as you're born and as soon as you're 17 years old. <laughs> I like that. You know, and so it's just like, it's now your job to pick up like, okay, so now what am I going to do with my life? This is my life. Whose life is it anyway? It's my life. You know, but I will tell you that that moment that that happened with that, I just went, you know, like when my mother, I was much more patient. It was like instantaneous. It was much more patient when I talked to my mother and I wanted to tear her throat out before. And just we were so we were like my mother and I were always have been fire and ice the whole time I'm growing up. And um, so that was, you know, you know, like we all have those moments and I like to help people have those moments. So they have the breakthrough that they need. And they deserve to have to move forward. So I hope what I said with you today was okay. And I hope it was okay for both of you. You know what? Um, So one thing I believe in is energy and it's vibrational. So when you heard, uh, when you talked to Gloria, hey, you know what? He he does not communicate. And, um, you know, I I felt through the microphone a release of energy. And I felt through the microphone that Gloria had an aha moment. Ah. Shit, I've been carrying this damn brick around the rest of my life. Now it's fine. Now I got now I can breathe a little bit, a sigh of relief. And when you said to her, what it manifested for me is uh, you know, um, my dad had a, a temper. He, one minute he'll he'll browbeat you or he'll say you're worthless, then one minute he says, I love you. And I say, shit, you know, that's how I am. Wait a minute here, Ron. Hold on, hold on one second. First of all, you're not him. Second of all, you're supported. And right then there, my body felt a small jolt. And those that don't understand what I mean, I I felt something was gone. It's like a a small spasm, as the best way to describe it. Because right then there, like you just said, is our our parents are here to birth this and that was it. So my dad's job was getting me to a certain point in my life. Now I got to be the person, which his name is Ron. And be that person and not live through my dad's filters or his lens. Because when I look around my life at this point, at this point in time, I am supported more than I think. Um, I'm supported by a lot of people that love me, just like you said, that I may not know. I mean, there may be a person that's listening to our podcast that loves, oh man, Ron's a great guy. I like that guy. My clients support me. And you, you say to yourself, damn, you know what? I'm hanging on to this, this baggage from my childhood. My dad's gone five years ago or five years ago. I, I, I don't want to carry that around the rest of my life. I don't want to corrupt me. You know, one, one thing's for sure, and it kind of has been in my mind. I'm going to die one day. Now, the choice is how I die. The choice is how I live my life until that day comes. It may come tomorrow. It may come a thousand years from now. But the choice is mine. And now thinking about my childhood, about being supported is uh, I am supported now. Now I, I wasn't then, and you know what? The best thing I say to myself: my parents did the best thing they could with, with what they have in front of them. But now in my life, I'm not only supported by myself first. I support myself. I'm also supported by people around me. May not be a million people, you know, supporting me. Who knows? But I'm supported by people that actually care about me. They're committed to supporting me, and that's. Now I'm going to make sure those around me, thank you, Gloria. Thank you, Dr. Pat, for supporting me because that right there helps me release a lot of energy. And that's what I'm going to do. So isn't it so much more fun going into 2021 with a lot more clarity? Oh, <laughs> yes. Yes. Yeah. Like, you know, and like yeah. five pounds off your body. Um, yeah. you know, and, and also, you know, like something else I always tell people to do too, you know, like when I'm coaching them and we're on the emotional issue or the mindset issue is like, you know, when... Um, you know, when I'm angry with somebody or if I, you know, with my ex-husband, because someone goes, you always talk so nice about your ex-husband. So Emmanuel, if you're out there listening to this, (laughs) (laughs) but but I used to say, I would just look at him and I would think like, what makes him act like that? You know, instead of getting angry or like being reactive, what makes him act like that? You know, and then I would say to him, I go, and Every day that I would get up, I would say, for all the good I see in him, I bless him, I bless him, I bless him. He's an incredible chiropractor. He's an incredible thinker. 
you know, and it's, you know, and so, and we're still friends. I mean, I got this really nice, you know, like happy new year's wish, you know, from him he, and uh, how come I haven't moved to an Island, <laughs> you know, and kind of things, but it's just like, you know, you, if you, you know, and people have said it to me all the time, they go, you always talk really nice about him, you know? And I said, well, I feel he isn't a bad guy. He was actually, he was a very good doctor. You know, and um, he was a thinker. He's a vertical thinker, you know, and his father was an incredible healer. And um, so he's, you know, it's just like if you, you know, in order to get past that block, sometimes you got to bless people. Like when someone does something that I call once a day, <laughs> you know, I guess like a once a day person, I'm thinking mm-hmm. like, oh, my God, why did that guy cut over five lanes? They're trying to kill themselves. You know, instead of saying what an idiot and call him, you know, four letter names and stuff like that. I just like poor guy. He's got, you know, he's got big, meeker challenges than, than what I'm imagining probably. You know, but but I'd still call them the four names anyway. (laughs) You know, but I would also think like, you know, like, wow, what makes somebody act like that? What makes somebody to the point where instead of saying like, you know, like, you know, we can agree to disagree. What happened? That's what went out the window in 2020. It's like, you know, agreeing, being able to agree to disagree, you know, and, you know, and having people like, you know, do a lot of like, you know, like some of the things I uh, saw on Facebook, I said, I think we need a new Facebook. I think we need to move forward. You know, Facebook's broken. Um, and I think we need to move forward on a different platform, you know, that has love and it has, you know, like um, people supporting each other. If you disagree with someone, then just don't make a comment. Just don't, you yeah. know. It's I like, totally if, agree with that. If you, um, if, you, if you don't like something that someone says, why do you have to argue with them about it? Nobody has to see the point of view that you're seeing. They don't you have know, to see it on your journey. Yeah. But the media, and everyone's got their own path. So if you think like, okay, so, you know, all the events in your life, Ron and Gloria and Dr. Pat, all of your events in your life, when your father gave you birth and made you angry and didn't support you made you who you are today because those events made you think beyond your nine dots and your solution isn't always in your box. Your solution is outside the box. Mm -hmm. And we keep on forgetting because we're going like, Oh, it's not in front of us. So obviously it doesn't, if it's not in front of me, it doesn't exist, you know? And that's not even true about science. Like just because, you know, um, something is not proven doesn't mean it doesn't exist. And, you know, and there's a lot of science and you always like in this day and time, you have to look at who's employing the scientist. Um, because a lot of times many scientists are beholden to that paycheck. And so a lot of times they're being asked to make whatever the numbers work, you know, and, um, in order to, in order to be able to, for them to move forward. But that's their path. And our path is to, you know, enrich and enliven people and help them have, com- for me, it's help them have more common sense. Like if, you know, if I won't do it, if anybody asks me a question, do you think I should X, Y, and Z? And if it doesn't make sense to me, I'm going to tell you, I'm very black and white. You know, it's like, no, <laughs> I don't, I don't, I'm not. When I was a, first a doctor, I would try to like buffer it up, you know, but I like now at this point in time, it's like, no. And if you keep on doing what you're doing, you're going to, whatever it is, you're going to blow your shoulder out. You're going to blow your back out. Um, and then if that's your path, then, you know, we can talk later. <laughs> it's like, but I don't babysit adults. That's one thing I don't do. You just tell them straight up. Well, you, know you, know, you don't want to waste your time and you don't want to waste your effort. Mm-hmm. And you don't want to waste your time on somebody who really doesn't want to have what you have to offer. So, yes. you know, and so clarifying who's your client and who isn't your client and who's in your niche or who isn't in your niche, you know, as soon as somebody tries to argue with me, I'm always going to see you later, <laughs> you know, uh, and because it's just like, you know, you don't want to, you know, you, you got to have the right equipment if you're going to go uphill. And a lot of people don't carry that equipment with them on a daily basis. No, they don't. They definitely they just don't. have a pick and a shovel and hope to make it uphill. That's all they really well, have. You know, you, you also have to, I just thought of an interesting analogy to that. So like your house is on fire, you're going to call, you're going to call the fire department, right? And they're going to come with two types of tools. They're going to come with a hose and an ax. So if you're going to fix something in your life, you want to call the right 
person. So on that, if you had a fire in your house, you couldn't call a dentist who also works with picks and axes, right? You got to go to the right source to get the right information to know how can I cut to the chase and get to from point A to point C in the most efficient, fastest way possible. That's better. That's simpler. And that how you have the breakthrough that I want to have so that I can do what I need to do in this lifetime. And that goes back to your first comment. Nothing has ha, nothing in your life happens by chance. Mm-hmm. And I would say that first, I'm going to say you're right about Facebook. Facebook is just, I just want to throw up. I mean, <laughs> you can say one comment and it just goes round in circles and someone else. I mean, Jesus Christ. I mean, you guys uh, come I me, mean, learn, make, hear a comment and say, Hey, how can I learn from this? Ask empowering questions. Don't just come up with, oh, I think this is right. I and mean, my opinion is better than yours. Right. But with that said, nothing happened by chance. Um, so I'm, not, I'm at a crossroads in my life. Um, I know the bridge on the other side, right? And at the point, the bridge, sorry, the other side is where I can live beyond what I'm living right now into a great magical greatness of my own power. And power comes with them. And like you said, find the right tools or find the right people or find whatever it is to get you to the next side. And Visually, I see it on the side, but something's holding me back. So a couple of days ago, I reached out to um, a spiritual healer, a conscious healer, and, and I guess the best way to put it, um, and obviously seeking help in different ways. Like, I'm going to call the right person. I'm not going to call a lawyer when I'm seeking a spiritual breakthrough or I'm seeking healing. So pretty much what it is, I'm seeking healing because if I can heal myself, then those things are holding me back, would catapult me to the next level, Right. So it's it's funny that I just reached out to someone that has been a guest on our podcast, has been a guest on our virtual summit, has been a guest, and it's just we had this this breakthrough moment. And when I was talking to her when she was part of our virtual summit, three things we did breath work like meditation, and uh, mm-hmm. three things came to mind: powerful, magnificent, wonderful, just out of the blue. And I reached out to her a couple of days ago to at least get set up and know, hey, you know, this is what I'm facing. Can can we work together? Can we help me? Does it make sense? Because I want to make sure I'm high ideal client and I want to make sure, you know, she can work with me. Um, and these are my issues. And back to your point, nothing happens by chance. I was supposed to be where I am at the right time. And she came in my life at the right time. And if things work out, we're going to move forward. Mm-hmm. Good. That's wonderful. That's amazing. I mean, I just... You know, we, we see the thing is, I, I, I go back to the fact that all the stuff we talk about, Dr. Pad, Gloria talks about, I talk about up until the last two years of my life, I didn't believe in it. I, I didn't believe in it. I, I really thought things were happening in my life because God made them happen to me. God gave me hand of bath cards. And it goes back that if we had, you know, but then again, if I go back and say, well, I wish I had this at 25 or 20, I wasn't really accept something different. If someone had planted seeds throughout my life of, hey, this is a different way of living, because the way that group living was religion was it first. Second thing is success was it. So if you want to be successful, you have to go to religion. And now the more research and more understanding, it's not everything. You so are everything. I, go can ahead. I ask you a question? Yes. Have you ever, I know it's just like, you know, um, I almost wanted to join this guy's church um, when I heard him. Do you know who T.D. Jakes is? T.D. Jakes, T.D. Jakes. A uh, name doesn't sound familiar. Well, he is this pastor. This He's a big black dude, pastor. And he, I was at a conference and somebody had a clip of him. And um, he talks about, you know, the word commitment. He talks about commitment. And he is funny as he, I was going to say he is funny as sin, no pun intended. Um, (laughs) um, But he is, he's very, very, you know, uh, he's very boisterous. He's very. um, Oh, yes. I I thought his name was something else. I know this guy. I've listened to several of his podcasts and YouTube videos. Right. So he talks, there's more than one of them. It's a famous talk that he gives on commitment. As he talks about people who's going, you know, who, and like what your level of commitment is, 
And he said, you get married, but you are committed to that person because it's like for until death do us apart, but you're getting divorced. That's where's the commitment? <laughs> and so, but he gives these really wonderful examples. And some of them, you know, you think that they're really quite funny. So when you're just talking about that particular last segment, you know, he kept on coming to mind, you know. Um, and, you know, and the other thing is that I really believe is God does not want you to be not successful. He wants you to succeed, you know. And so when, you know, sometimes we have struggles that we go through, and certainly I've had a lot of them too. It's just like, but you have, I go, I keep on asking myself, what am I supposed to learn from this? I'm persistent you know, and I'm resourceful. Those are two things that people always say about me. I'm persistent. I'm resourceful. I will figure out a way, throw me in the fire and I'll come out blazing like a Phoenix and reinventing myself. And the, you know, it's just like in that, but you got to listen to this. You have to go back and listen to that. And your listeners would be like, a, it would be a good listen for anybody who's, who thinks they're committed <laughs> because when you get done listening to them, you're realizing like, you know what? Maybe I'm not as committed to my life, to my success, to my you know partner, to, you know, whoever, maybe I'm not as successful as I think or committed. I mean, um, as I, as I really need to be. And it changes when you change that perception, you can do something about it. There's another video of a guy, um, in this girl going up an escalator. Have you ever seen it? And it stops all of a sudden. So on the escalator, you have a choice. You can stand still, you know, or you can, go back down the steps, or you could go forward. And so uh, in the video, if you look it up, it's called moving to take action or something like that. And uh, this guy stands there and he's like, oh my God, I can't believe this is happening. And the girl behind him is going, I got a job interview. What are we going to do? How are we going to get off the escalator? You know? And then they start screaming, hello, anybody, we need help help. The escalator's not working, <laughs> you know, and you see them and the music goes on a little bit and you see them standing there. And then someone starts walking up. They're going, Oh my God, there's somebody here. And the guy says, Hey, I'm here. I'm here to fix it. So he presses the button and the downstairs escalator coming up to their escalator starts to work. And all of a sudden it stops. And then they're all sitting down because they're stuck by and paralyzed by the immediateness of the action and they don't know how to get through the action and all they have to do is walk forward mm-hmm. <laughs> it's a very cool video it's like, it's like i use that for a training you know to share with somebody like i go do you get it do you get how you're stuck you just have to move forward mm-hmm. you know and going I- back how you came is only good if there's a fire ahead of you and there's danger <laughs> but, but the you know but the you know like it, it's just like you can get off the escalator you can move and it's so it's it's like well, so many people are like that and they don't realize that that option's there yeah and I like that how you use that example so so I was listening to you about that and I was thinking man I really I just had a breakthrough with Dr. Pat on the first day of the year <laughs> because now it got me thinking you're right I I do have for some reason, I thought I was, you know, I've gotten over it and I've let go, but I still hold that baggage behind me that just comes up for some reason once in a while. How am I moving forward with this is that I've realized while sitting here and listening is that his cousin who's been reaching out to me and who's been in contact with me, who's, you know, my uncle, that why don't I move forward with him and and just stay connected with him and start a relationship with him? But make it like it has nothing to do with my dad at all, because I feel like there's, you know, he's he's reaching out to me and making sure he's in contact with me doesn't really mention anything about my dad or my situation. So why don't I stay with that with him and just, you know, have a certain relationship with him? without having to do with my dad. So what I'm going to do is he did offer to, I hope to see you before I go back to the Philippines and have a get together with you. And I'm going to say yes to that. And, you know, hopefully in the next um, couple of months before he goes back is to um, talk to him or maybe hopefully meet up with him. 
So here's here's I have a challenge for you, Gloria and Ron and Dr. Pat. <laughs> the top of myself. <laughs> and and yourself, um, of course. Include myself. Is this like um, all three of us need to meet next New Year's, you know, oh. um, and do a podcast next year. And so what the goal is, um, is to say yes to any invite that's reasonable. So if you say, oh, and you go, oh, I'd love to do that, then the answer is yes. Answer is yes. Yeah, you know, the answer is yes. Like say as yes to many invites as you possibly can go, can do. Yes. You know, don't say no. You know, when I first started um, from March 17th doing podcasts and radio shows and stuff like that, because I would love to do, I would, you know, I love doing them. And um, is that I said my goal was to do 20 of them. And um, and I just, you know, the, the other day somebody asked me for, like, can you give me like five podcasts you've been on? I said, oh, honey, I can give you a lot more than that. I said, I've been on over 50 podcasts since March 17th. Wow. And I didn't plan it, but I, after, as soon as I hit 20, I was going, I think I'm underestimating my ability to shine like a star. And so could we all do it. We all have like, where does that come from? You know? And so, you know, it's just like, so step into your greatness. You know, say yes, say yes to any invite. And then if there's any that would cause you any physical harm, you know, then that's a good way to, one to say no to. <laughs> but, yeah. um, you know, it, but it's just like, you know, just, just say yes. Mm -hmm. And that, and you know, that it has such positive energy, the word yes, doesn't it? Yes, oh, it, it does. does. It really does. Well, you know, somebody on, on Cape Cod, there's a town called P-Town, which is Providence our province, I'm thinking, I'm thinking of Rhode Island. It's called P-Town and um, Provincetown. And um, there was a liquor store there. And, um, you know, when I was walking by in the afternoon, their sign said open. When I was walking by at nighttime on the way back to get the boat to go back to Boston, um, it said, nope. <laughs> so the anagram of open is an O-P-E. <laughs> so, so it's just like he was insane not open i mean he was, was insane he was open he was just saying like you know I, th I thought that was very clever you know so you know you can always choose open i'm open to things i'm open yes yes the answer is yes if you want to ask me something and the answer is yes so you just have to figure out when you say yes what are the things that I have to do to step up to bat to get to home plate? Because mm -hmm. you know, there's no process that does not require time. And, you know, and and like and the thing with your uncle too. I mean, just thanking him for thinking of you that you know, and just tell me really, you know, that you're very appreciative of that, and you look forward to seeing him before he goes to, back to the Philippines. I will. I will. And that's, you know, I was just thinking, yeah, I was just thinking about like kind of just staying strong with all this. Right. And just like what you said, um, just, just say yes, but me, be more confident. So I want to go back to, I think you have um, something coming up. Oh, I do. <laughs> stronger, stronger than medicine. And um, I, if it's an online course, you have, I believe it's this month that you're starting. That. It is it's actually in two days. So there's still time oh. to sign up. Perfect um, timing. Yeah, if you can explain. Well, I'm, gonna re I'm repeating the course. This this time, this particular course is a beta course. So um, it was reduced by 75%. I gave a 50% reduction because it was a beta. And then every year in January, I give out gift certificates for $500 of my services as a gift of health going into the new year. So you can truly step in with confidence. And also if you get my book, why are you sick, fat and tired? You'll know exactly what your weakest link is. So you know where to fortify that link so you can have a better immune system. So, but the course, um, for, um, for the stronger than medicine course is a, a course for people who are busy professionals and entrepreneurs who want to scale their time and improve their health profitability and self care for themselves and for those that matters. Cause so many people at the end of the day are depleted. So what we do is we look at like, you know, like um, what stresses you out that makes you sick? We talked a little bit about that before. Um, and we look at things that, you know, so you can identify them. So it's like, if that stresses me out, what can I do about it so that I have a buffer? 
you know, because it's not, some of it's not going to go away and not all stress is bad. Um, that's an important thing to uh, do also. And also there's a, you know, like, you know, uh, categorizing your day and your week. So in, in the course, there is one thing I can promise is there is going to be a lot of accountability and there's going to be a lot of knowledge shared. So you can stack that power, like knowledge is power in a very likely logical manner. Um, and also get a handle on where is my health today? What's my health snapshot and how can I get past that? Because you can't do any job. You can't do any relationship if you aren't healthy, because when you're not healthy, most people feel like they're a burden to themselves and to their families and to their friends. And you didn't grow up. You didn't have that. Like I was born, I came on the earth and I'm going, I'm going to end up with a chronic illness and disease. So it doesn't make sense to carry that kind of belief system forward. So the first course this Sunday is going to be, um, you know, it's, it's probably going to be an hour and a half. And I spend a lot of time on mindset and like things that you can like, you know, so you have to understand where your mindset comes from, because then you can recreate the foundation and not have any cracks in it. So that course on market price today is that it's with my gift of health and um, which would include a 75% discount um, it makes it four ninety seven. And so um, I don't know if we're going to have show notes here, but I can put the bit.ly link for the um, for the course itself and people can check it out. And if it's for them, I would love them to hop on. One thing I'm going to do in this course here, and I'll do it throughout the first week. Hopefully I'll get everybody done um, is I'm going to do my same intake. So I'm doing my full questionnaire because I don't guests I test. So my first test with people is to find out where that weakest link is and then show them how they can go from point A to point C, you know, that makes sense for them because I do very individualized um, patterns for people for their um, lifestyle medicine and functional medicine. And then you can order appropriate tests and then you can really find out, you know, what's that, what's lurking below the surface. So you don't have a big surprise, (laughs) you you know, at some point in time going like, oh, I didn't know that. You know, and for people who have that um, belief system that they're, you know, like my family has a history of cardiovascular disease or diabetes or whatever, those are all lifestyle induced diseases. So if you're if if you're a rose bush and none of the rose bush ever blooms all at the same time. And nobody in a family, not everybody in the family has cardiovascular disease if that's a prevalent gene weak. Uh, genetic link, you know, but what you can, you can change your constitution by changing the food that you eat, um, the amount of exercise that you get, the amount of sleep that you get and the quality and the hygiene of that, your mental attitude and your, be how positive you are. Um, and cause your thoughts can undo anything that what you do to help with the mechanics or the structure function and posture part of your body. So they can help really undo that very quickly. So in this course, in six weeks, um, we go over, you know, um, I help people take, walk that path so they get their New Year's resolution. Not only can they make a New Year's resolution in health, but they actually can fulfill that dream and fulfill that goal this year instead of like falling off the wagon, which I think there's some huge rate. I read it the other day. I think it's like 50 or 60, 75, 80% people you know, don't complete their new year's resolutions because they are making resolutions. They're not, they don't know how to make goals. You know, you make a goal that's achievable for yourself, but this year, if you really want to be healthy, this is the course for you to do. It's six weeks long and it is four ninety seven, Um, and you have one, an hour and a half of my time, um, making, designing a program so you can get your stuff and how you can get more benefit out of the program that we're going to do. Wow, four hundred ninety-seven dollars to change my life. Yeah, come on, come on, come on in. The water's that's, fine. <laughs> that's. I mean, you said about New Year's resolution, and I think about JD uh, Jakes. And he says the reason why people fail, and Tony Robbins said, is that they lack the why and lack commitment. The the why the commitment has to be strong enough. So does the why. So someone stays strong enough to their commitment, which is to get better health or change in mindset. And four ninety seven for commitment for a change for the rest of your life. Mm-hmm. Yeah, you got to be committed to that. You got to commit because you got two choices now. The choice is you go through Doctor Pat's program, 
or you can call your local physician and he's going to prescribe some medicine for you. Like, hey, call me in a couple of months and see if you feel better. You come back with the same problems, even worse problems. And he says, okay, here's another prescription. Hope you feel better. Come in 90 days. Come back. Now you're taking three or four prescriptions, hoping you feel better when you're still at the same start. Well, that's the sad truth. You know, and that's how, you know, we all heard the word, the phrase, the keywords, new normal. But that's how people make new normals, too. It's just like, and, and then they, they try to second guess it, you know. So women do second guessing really well. Um, so when you have that second guessing going on, then it keeps you stuck. You don't know what really to do. And so even, you know, when, you know, I'm, I'm looking for people to join our group and to, um, to be able to have the ability to like think outside the box. If you're not an outside the box thinker, don't sign up for it. You're going to hate it <laughs> because they're, you know, they, you know, I, I'm very black and white and I'm like call an ace and ace and a spade a spade. And, you know, I used to be really nice when I was in my thirties, but now I just say, do you hear yourself speaking, <laughs> you know? And, but, you know, but sometimes you have to have that breakthrough. You can't have that breakthrough unless you have that resistance either. Yeah. So, you know, but I, I believe anybody who like believes in themselves and believes in their tomorrow and believes that they can have a healthy, longer, better life, you know, then they should come join me. And just come and in I, with an I, open mind. And I, and I don't bite. <laughs> no, no, no. So this should be, yeah. So if you don't have a goal set yet, this should be the first goal for 2021 is join Dr. Pat and show yourself some love. Ah, yeah. Thank you. That was great. I'm going to hire you. I like that. Show yourself some love. Yes. Yeah. So with those yeah. that are curious about you and your program, I'm going to put the description and when we post the podcast, but, you know, verbally tell us, tell our audience out there how they can find you, how they can email you if they have more questions. Get in contact. Well, if, if somebody has more questions about me or wants to find out about me, my, uh, my link to my uh, website is healthteamnetwork.com. Um, I'm easily findable on, um, on LinkedIn. And the LinkedIn is my name, doc, Dr. Pat Boulogne, um, B-O-U-L-O-G-N-E. And if anybody understands how bit.ly links work, you have to have the HTTPS, <laughs> you know, and then the semi or colon and then forward slash forward slash. And it's B-I-T dot L-Y forward slash stronger than medicine. Um you know, that is the link to get into my course as would be the information where you get the information about it and also have the ability to actually sign up for the course. And I'm going to be repeating the course in March and, but it's going to be at full price. Oh my um, goodness. And so at full price, it's going to, it's, it's not, it's, you're not going to get it for 500. It's five times the amount. So it's, um, and that's for the group portion of it. And the one-on-one, -on -one, I will do that same course with somebody one-on-one. -on -one. And then, you know, and also in the second time when I repeat it, there'll be a beginning, uh, you know, intake with me. And then there'll be an exit so that we can see where you're at, how much progress that you made, what worked for you, what didn't work for you, and make recommendations about how you can have a better tomorrow. That's, that's how it starts. A better tomorrow now. Yeah, it doesn't start tomorrow. You got to start today. You can start right? today. So I was going to say, you know, you said it earlier in, in the podcast is um, people have this idea that time is uh, the significance of time. Like the first of the year, I'm going to make a change the first of the year. Uh, in reality, you can make a change any second of the day because time doesn't have the idea of tomorrow is Wednesday or you know, tomorrow is Saturday. I think it is Saturday tomorrow. No one has the idea of that, or the universe doesn't have an idea, but we always want to set up our mind that I'm going to wait till this happens to do this. I'm going to wait until the first year to lose weight. I'm going to wait till uh, someone passes away before I find focus on myself. I'm going to, no. Every day you get a free 24 hours, and every day you get the opportunity to make better decisions for yourself. Every second you do. And joining Dr. Pat's program will allow you the tools. It's like the example of the firefighter. I wouldn't call a firefighter up to work on my teeth. He's, he's not a firefighter. Even though he does have a pick and axe, I wouldn't tell him to work on my teeth. But You mean a dentist. I'm a dentist, yes. <laughs> <laughs> and you certainly wouldn't and you wouldn't and you wouldn't want the firefighter to work on your teeth. Right? Uh, no, no, not at all. <laughs> 
But if my yeah. home's on fire, I'm calling fire fire. I'm not calling a dentist. That's for sure. <laughs> well, you know, and, and you also have to look at what the analogy is there too, because the hoses and acts, the hoses represent medications and, you know, and really watering down where the root problem is and not being able to identify it. And then, you know, you have the acts and that represents surgery, right? Because when medical in Western medicine, you always hear the person like, well, we don't know what else to do. You know, when I worked as a patient relations advocate at University of Michigan Hospital years ago before I became a chiropractor or even thought about going to school, um, you know, I ran into a guy in, in the cancer ward who was very mopey and walking down the hall. And I said to him, I go, hey, I don't think I met you. And he goes, oh, you probably won't see me again. I went, why is that? And he said, well, I'm going to die. I said, we're all going to die. And he started laughing. And <laughs> then he said, you know, we were in this conversation and, you know, um, he said, well, they just told me I had just weeks to live. And I said, why are you still here? I mean, for me, I mean, well, I said to him, I was 26 years old at the time. I said, when I, I said, for me, I said, someone told me that this, I go in the walls, then this is before they modernized it and made it into a spa type setting. Um, they had, it was like puke green walls. And I said, I don't know. This is not the place that I'd want to die. <laughs> I would just say, I'd go, I'd go out and do whatever it is that I always wanted to do and never had the opportunity to do it. And I would do it, you know, and go grab it, you know. And so if you ever want to scare your parents, you should ask your parents if there is, and if you have the ability to do it, so if you ever could do anything in your life, you know, that you have dreamed of, but you've never did it. What is that? And, you know, I asked my mother that question after the, the mentally retarded thing we talked about earlier. And um, she hung the phone up on me. <laughs> and really? about a week later, she called me back and she said, well, I think that I would like to go down to Florida for the whole winter. I've never done that. And I've always wanted to do that. You know, and so she, I said, OK, so I go, when do you want to go? She hung the phone up. <laughs> and, um, <laughs> I, was then, and I was making a ton of money. And, you know, and, you know, and I'm not no longer in that particular office. I haven't been in that office for a long time. And so, um, but she just said, so I got her a, a plane ticket. I had somebody take her to the airport. I made sure she got on the plane because I lived in Boston at the time and she lived in Michigan. My aunt and uncle were going down and they had a place that they rented for a couple months. So I um, helped her I said like so if you go down for a month and you want to stay longer just let me know and you can stay for the whole winter but she was so happy to spend time with two people she loved from the moon and back for one whole month and they got and they always have gotten along really really well and so I was really glad to be able to give her that gift that she because she would never have done it if she wasn't asked that question. So it's always interesting to see what somebody has that they say, like, oh, I've always wanted to do blah, whatever it is. And if you have the capacity to do it for them, just think about what a blueprint, you know, on your carbon print that you have in this lifetime for that moving forward. That's just a wonderful thing to do. Yeah, it certainly is. It's a choice you make. Yeah. So I want to say, Dr. Pat, it has been a pleasure to have you again for the second round and these amazing breakthroughs. Um, we have the choice of a better life daily. And given us these tools that you gave us, now I have the opportunity to live a better life now. And thank you for sharing how stronger than medicine will benefit those out there that need help um, and those out there that want to turn to a different approach and just medication. And where they can find you in that great discount of four ninety seven, that's a great price to feel better. It's the original price for the beta was uh, two grand. Yeah, and so, so I mean, you know, this so is that, huge. So this that that's a huge discount, and you know, I, I thought about it because I think so many people were struggling mentally with um, COVID. And then also physically, because they don't know how, they really don't know. <laughs> they're not being told the truth about where their immune systems really are. Mm -hmm. And, um, you know, and, and people don't know what to really do to up their game on their, on their immune system. And, you know, you've got to fix your gut. If you don't fix your gut, you can't change your life. I mean, that, that's just basic. <laughs> gut, uh, good health. So, yep. So I would love to have, you know, this is like, you know, I, I'm looking uh, forward to helping people live longer, better, healthier. And I have a dream. And my dream is, um, you know, there's that, always that saying that like, when you have your health, you have a thousand dreams. And when you don't, you only have one. Well, one of my big dreams is help masses of people really live really well. Mm -hmm. I love it. I love it. 
So, you know what? So, audience out there, thank you for listening to another episode, Life's a Shuffle with Dr. Pat. Um, we've created a Facebook group called um, Life's a Shuffle. So, if you did don't have access to Apple Podcasts or leave a comment or be a special guest, go to Facebook, go to Life's a Shuffle, comment below, be a special guest. Or if you have a question, we will be able to answer it on the air so you guys can get the answers you need now and don't have to wait for it. Uh, myself and Gloria are both life coaches, and we know how important it is to uh, have the questions that we have answered. Um, I'll tell you one tidbit is that when I used to listen to a lot of audibles almost every day for about at least 30 minutes until I realized there's no one to talk back to me. I have all these questions, but who's going to talk back to me? And that's when I started reaching out, talking to therapists and coaches because I need someone to talk back and give me a clear direction. So this is Ronald Johnson, micro coach and life coach. Thank you for listening to the episode of Life's a Shuffle. Yes. And again, thank you for joining us today, Dr. Pat, and for all the information you've given us. Thank you for the breakthrough again on the first year of the year. Um, again, I'm sorry, first day of the year. And again, this is Gloria, your life coach. Um, thank you for listening to another episode of Likely Shuffle.